socket runtime makes it possible to ship apps faster. You want your app to run on any OS because you want to reach the largest possible audience. That means iOS, Mac OS, Android, Windows, Linux, even Xbox. You want your app to work the same way across every operating system without coding for a bunch of different exceptions. You want to be able to use any front end code because you want to maximize your productivity. You only want one code base because multiple code bases means more bugs, more experts, higher burn, more risk, and ultimately more time before you get to market. You want familiar APIs. And socket runtime is for web developers because it's a truly write once, run anywhere experience. Let's try it out. I'm in an empty directory that I just created for this demo and I'm going to run npx create socket app. And I'm going to provide React as the first argument because I would like it to use, to create boilerplate for a React project. I can see there are the files that it created. And I'm just going to run whatever it is that it created. And as you can see, it's creating a native app for the platform that I'm on. OK, so that's cool. But what I would like to do is take a closer look at those files. And I can see there's a source directory with a default icon, uh, some basic CSS, um, an HTML file. There's my root tag. And um, here's some uh, JSX that was created. All right, well, let's go ahead and um, let's modify some of this stuff. Well, first of all, um, I want to change the layout a little bit. Um, I'd like to. Uh, wrap all this stuff here in a in a different in another tag because I'm going to add a few more tags to this and I want to center them. So let's create let's wrap this in a main tag and then let's go to our CSS and let's change this so that instead of centering the H1, uh, it's going to center main. Cool. Um, so then in the uh, JSX over here, what I'd like to do is I'd like to create a text area because I want to I want to make a request to an external API and I want to load the results of that into the text area, something like that. So um, let's give it a value of data and um, we'll give it an on change event to I'm not sure what, maybe we'll maybe we'll use that maybe not. Um, and then we'll give it some rows so that it's not all crammed on one line. Um, and then we'll give it a closing tag. OK, so in order to get some data into that text area, or just to get some data at all, when this component loads, let's use state, and let's use memo. And we won't use this debug thing yet. But when this is created, let's set up um, data and set data from use state. And, <clears throat> and so then we'll need to call use memo um, with an async function because, and without any dependencies. Because what we would like to do just once is call um, a, uh, just the generic or the built in fetch uh, method. Since we're in a browser environment, that will just work. Uh, so we can do um, like GitHub status.com API v2 summary.json. I think will give us back some data, just some JSON to play with. And we'll make that into a string, stringify response. Oh, I think we have to await. Response JSON, and <clears throat> and once that's a string, we could just show it in the text area. But what would be more interesting is if we import fs from socket fs, and so we'll um, await fs from promises um, write file. 
and we'll write it to like um, data.json. Uh, and we'll pass it the string. And then when, once we've done that, we could set data to um, like loaded. Um, that way, what will happen is that once it gets this thing, it's going to <clears throat> show loaded in the text area. OK, um, so let's just stop here for a second, because it's not going to be able to call this domain because we haven't, we haven't allowed the application to communicate with anything yet. Um, if we go over to the index file, we can see that there's a content security policy. So we need to add that domain to this. And once we have, then this um, fetch call will uh, successfully work. But what would be nice is after it loaded, if we could add like a, a button here that had an on click. So when we click it, it will like re, um, read the data. Um, so like we want to read it off the disk. Uh, we'll add a closing, closing tag to that. And then um, make an async function called read data that is going to um, call set data again. But in this case, it's going to await fs promises read file to data.json. And we're going to read that as UTF-8 data. OK, so we just to recap what we're doing here. So when this component's constructed, or when this component's rendered, it's going to set up this use state stuff. It's going to call use memo. It's going to fetch some data from an API, and it's going to stringify that. And we're going to write it into a file. And then we're going to indicate to the UI that that's ready. And then <clears throat> when the user clicks the button, then what's going to happen is we're going to read that data and we're going to display it into the uh, text area. OK, so I'm going to split my screen here. And um, we're going to run npm start. OK, so there we see that it says it's loaded. And I'm going to click read. And it read all the JSON that we got from the API. So cool. Um, so that's giving us a pretty good idea about what it's like to build a desktop app. But we also might want to run this on iOS. We can take a look at what npm start's actually doing here. And it's, it's calling the compiler. And we can make some changes here. SSC build, um, we're just going to add platform, a platform argument. And we're going to tell it to build for iOS simulator. Um, and we'll change this to uh, start for iOS. OK, so now we'll do npm run start iOS. And um, so it's going to do basically the same thing it did for desktop. Um, but it's going to install the application into the um, simulator. It's going to launch it. And we're going to see that it's loaded. And we'll hit this read. And then we'll see that it um, loaded all this JSON data that it got from the API. OK, so uh, let's also try this for uh, Android. So we'll specify Android, which is a little bit different. Android emulator. Um, OK, so instead of start iOS, start Android. The first time run, it's going to get the, all of the uh, assets and build all the dependencies and everything that it needs to run in the simulator completely from scratch. Um, this is the very first time that we've run this emulator. So this really gives you a good idea about what the very first experience is like um, when you're running um, an, an application that you're building for the first time. So there we have Android, iOS, and Mac OS. And the experience is the same on Windows, Linux, et cetera.